Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Wardy's Waffle. I apologise for midweek waffle being late. It only went out on was it Friday night, I think it was. And that's because of my phone being run over. Some of you might have seen the live video I did where an articulated lorry ran over my phone. Now, some of you, yes, are laughing and I've had lots of text messages um, <laughs> regarding that. And thank you for those. Um, and then it caused me a fair bit of grief because it was late in the evening. It was nine o'clock at night back at the show early on Wednesday the first day but I must say the NFU Mutual who I'm insured with we've only been with them I think about three years now and uh, there was one or two of them in, at the NFU stand they helped and I managed to get full payout of the of the phone uh, but they can't get a 13 Pro so uh, I've actually got a 14 Pro now the one up but I've had to pay in excess um, but I'd just like to say how fantastic the NFU Mutual were at getting this sorted I went to Curry's um, and got the phone picked up. Uh, I was, uh, Rhonda's got on a train and went to Scotland uh, to the Highland show. I got into Newark early after dropping her at the station and uh, I thought Curry's opened at nine o'clock. So I waited till about five past nine, stroll up to the sliding door at Curry's and normally expected the sliding door to open, but uh, it didn't because they were shut, but I didn't realize. And I carried on walking even though the door was shut. And of course I walked into the door. Um, I'm all right. I didn't do my nose or anything. So that's two things. So my forehead and the phone. Uh, I then had to wait an hour. But I, I can't believe that curries don't open till 10 a.m. Um, on a uh, on a weekday uh, weekday. Anyway, I then they hadn't got a phone. I then had to go to Grantham Curries because they had got the phone, the, the one terabyte memory that I have. Um, that um, they got that phone that, that I needed. So I got it sorted eventually. Got it all downloaded and we're working. So this is it. Hope it's okay. Anyway. Thanks um, for watching this week's uh, update, the Lincolnshire show, the live ones and on Friday nights. This update, what we're looking at, um, uh, one or two little bits from the Lincolnshire show that I couldn't put in last week because it was made it too long. One or two interviews and things. Um, this first interview I'm going to be talking to is a dairy um, farmer and beef farmer from Warwickshire who has actually is his first visit to the Lincolnshire show, but he's only gone because of um, looking at my live uh, videos and he thought what a great show it was. We're then looking at one or two other snippets of the show, the young farmers. I got asked to go into the uh, main ring when they were having their water fight and their flower fight and that's a bit of fun and I got I got went in the main ring there um, at the time and got clobbered a bit by them but not too bad uh, and so that's it from from the um, Lincolnshire show here I'm going to be looking at the spring oats we've got here up on the light land we've also got sugar beet here so we we'll take a look at that and also I take a look at the um, black grass control as well and go into that in a little bit of detail as well I'm not going to touch on the SFI things because quite a lot gone on this week with a new announcement by Mark Spencer at the show. It's still not right. Being paid £5.60, I think, a hectare, I think it is, for these complicated soil standards that don't suit many people. It's just not enough money. DEFRA um, are, are sort of throwing their arms in the air and, and, and uh, popping the party balloon saying, what a fantastic job we've done for the farmers. Absolute rubbish. You have not. If you want us to put all this land or some land into stewardship while producing food, I must stress while producing food, you have to pay reasonable amounts, not this pocket money that you're offering us at the minute. And the red tape involved in going to all these standards is absolutely colossal. Please, please, DEFRA, I know some of you watch this video. Please take it on board that you're not going to get the take up of these schemes if you carry on on the line you're going at the minute. I'm not going to say any more because it'll make this video too long. Give me a ring if you need it. Some of you know my contact details. Please, DEFRA, do not take us for mugs. We will not go into these schemes to help the environment on the payments that you're putting out at the minute. End of the rant. Let's carry on and we'll look forward um, to seeing you at the end if you make there. Thanks very much for watching. Here we go. Day two of the Lincolnshire show, we're just heading to the NFU stand and yes, I'm on an old phone at the minute and thank you very much for the very, very sympathetic not <laughs> comments on me flattening my phone on the A15 on um, uh, Wednesday, uh, sorry, no, Tuesday uh, evening. Anyway, uh, thank you for that. Also. Birchwood Junior School, the children who thrive in the NFU tent and it's fantastic because I've been showing them about the history of the NFU and food production in the country and they all look a bit hot so I've just bought them all 
can of Diet Coke. They also said they could the drinks. So I bought them all a can of Diet Coke, so I'm going to have them and join them. But this is a school I've been working with for two years now, and it's just fantastic. I think the world of them. This come into the education building now with the teachers, and we've got the presentations now for the school's challenge. And uh, I'm here with Virtual, and they wanted me to come with them, which is great. So we're going to have a look and just see if they if they have uh, won anything. Fantastic, all the hard work. Look how pleased they are. Well done. Brilliant. This was Birchwood's display. The theme was the nature area. This is what they're doing. That's what I've been helping them with. They've done a huge amount of work. That's why they came to visit the farm. There we are when I took them around the farm on the trailer. So yeah, we've got a, a wildflower flower area going to be put up. Look at that. Well done, all of you. At the Peacock and Binnington stand, as you can see. We've got Varna sat in the machine, and I've got... Cheers, red wine, here we go. Oh, cheers, cheers, Phil. Yeah. New Holland. Nev, Peter Scott, Ronda's got... Come on, Ronda, no, Ronda hasn't got anything. Here we go, so uh, having a nice refreshment it's outside the Peacock. Absolutely, what yes. more could we really want? Enjoying, yeah. We are about to be educated because Peter just said that there's a true saying about tractors. So Peter, you need to speak up a bit. So oh, good, morning. Was... good morning, good <laughs> morning. Uh, now, talk about tractors and colours. Yeah. Now, always remember, red, you may as well stay in bed. Right. Green should never be seen. Yeah. But blue will always do. <laughs> there we go. Remember that one. Brilliant. Thanks, I want to see it on telly tonight. Yeah, well, you watch on YouTube, it'll be on on Sunday. Brilliant. So I've just had uh, Andrew come up to me and just say uh, um, hello because, uh, first of all, the Lincolnshire show here, you haven't been before, you're from Warwickshire, and the reason you're here... Yeah, I mean, because of you, Andrew. Never <laughs> been, saw the Wardies Waffle, which you watch every week, and yeah. uh, what a super show. I'd recommend it to anyone. Oh, thank you very much. Now, well, that just shows the power of social media, so that's brilliant, that is. So thanks for that, and hope you've enjoyed it, as you say, having it. It is a great show, isn't it? You, it's you, just, you described it as what? I described it as a mini royal show that we had on our doorstep and sadly lost yeah. uh, 20 years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. And the, and the uh, livestock lines, you've been looked at those? Yeah, livestock being a dairy farmer, uh, super show of cows and beef cattle as well. First yeah, class, yeah. a credit to the show. Yeah, I think it is. Brilliant. Thank you for that. Right, next one. Looking now at dairy. You say you're a dairy farmer. Um, price of milk at the minute and everything that's happening in the dairy industry and the support or lack of support you're getting. Who, yes. who are you contracted to? We're contracted to Muller. Uh, we've had uh, three price drops and another price drop of two pence a litre for the 1st of July, yet the supply of milk is dwindling and there is just no justification with our costs and overheads as they are to drop the milk price when they are doing it. No. 
It's, it's, and, and we were talking a few minutes ago, and you think your cost of production is 38, 40p a litre. Definitely, that's without labour. Yeah. So once you put labour onto yeah. that, you are at least 40 pence a yeah, litre with your overheads as they are. And what do Muller say about this? I mean, it's again, another case of producing food at a loss. And it happens with arable, it happens with vegetables, it happens with poultry, milk. It's just, it carries on. It's relentless, isn't it? It is relentless. Uh, and it's, as you say, and it's a relentless job seven days a week. But they're going to come unstuck because there are cows being sold up every week. And there's a lot of cows being slaughtered because of the beef price. And coming to the autumn, there will be... I think there will be no milk on the shelves. No. It was only yesterday my wife had a delivery uh, from Morrison's. She ordered creme fraiche and double cream, and they'd got neither. You see, that just shows. And we've had empty shelves for the past few months, various places, and I just think it's something the public are going to have to get used to. Uh, and, and do you think DEFRA and the government realise what, what, how much you're being screwed? No, they do not. I've lobbied my MP on numerous occasions. I've even had him out to the farm. Yeah and pointed out our costs they want higher and higher standards and they all come with the costs and i don't mind the higher standards in fact i'm all for it yeah but you don't get out for now and exactly and the problem is of course you've got these higher standards but yet imports come in with lower standards precisely and, and there's no level playing field not at all and we're having to operate and produce food with our hands and ankles tied together where whereas any uh, imports come in don't have any of the restrictions no they don't we produce the finest safest yeah. food in the world what, what does Muller say when you challenge you? you must have meetings and things you go to what do Muller say to this we do but they just react to the market but they should be with their size market leaders and take this forward if they want to support the producer mm. and have a long-term supply of mm. milk mm. they need to lead from the front and what about what about um, when you start to look at profits now Where, where's Muller's profits are they sky high very much so. Uh, Muller have recently, their parent company, well, Muller is the parent company, yeah. but their sister company, Kalina, yeah. has just purchased Stobart Transport. Oh, crikey. So, um, huge company. A massive, and a, a massive purchase price to do so. Yeah. Well, if they're not paying us for the price of milk, where is that money going? Mm, exactly, I know, but it's, it's a tough, tough job. But thank you for what you do because milking is a seven day a week and, and 365 day a year job. It certainly is, it, know, it is. And I can't manage without milk. And the thing is, I think the vast majority of the public, if they had to pay an extra few pence a litre for the milk, they wouldn't mind because you can't manage without milk. It's such a good, wholesome food. Uh, and, and they wouldn't mind paying a few extra pence. No, that they would. Like you say, it is a wholesome food, and a few extra pence is nothing. No. But all they keep trying to hit us with is the cost of living crisis, mm. and I do think that is just a lame excuse. Yeah, yeah, I think it is as well, yeah. But anyway, Andrew, we'll keep in touch, and thanks very much for coming up and saying hello, and carry on watching. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Interesting, this is University of Lincoln project. Hmm. At least you don't have to follow him with a with a poo bag. This is just coming out the main ring, part of the display that you saw a lot of yesterday. So this is the rest of them going around the uh, around the main ring. Just been asked to go to Radio Lincolnshire. Thank you. Not quite sure what for. I have a word of them, I think, about something. Apparently, they're meant to have rung me, but didn't. But we've got Abby Dewhurst here, which does the weather on our TV. Here, you see all the people here. So this is Melvin Prime, who does one of the slots the Radio Lincolnshire. And he's going to talk to me in a minute. Here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Day two of the Lincolnshire show. Melvin Pryor with you through until six. And we're watching the parade of the livestock in our main ring at the moment. This, to me, is one of the highlights. It's showing what happens, you know, not just in Lincolnshire, but across the country in the world of agriculture. And with uh, Andrew Ward, uh, Lincolnshire farmer, also wearing his NFU badge today. That's Hello, right. Andrew. How are you Hello, doing? Hello, Melvin. All great. Thank you very much. And you've just mentioned the previous song we heard, Red, Red Wine. I've just had a glass, so brilliant. Thank you. But as you say, what a spectacle we have here, aren't we, in this ring? Isn't that fantastic? I think it's wonderful. I think what it does, it just shows and illustrates, you know, 
what farming's about in many respects. It is, and I think the perception that Lincolnshire is a predominantly arable county and grows n or does nothing else but grow cereals and crops. Look at that. All these are from Lincolnshire. Yeah. It's stunning, isn't yeah. it? No livestock on your farm now? No, we, we, my father went out of livestock in the early 60s, but we're growing all the usual sort of boring crops, if you like to call them boring, like wheat, barley, um, sugar beet. Um, we're growing beans, we're growing a crop of haricot beans, baked beans, which we'll talk of in a minute, um, and also oats as well, so quite a broad range of crops, but uh, um, yeah, just trying to produce food. How's the season been so far? We had a big downpour on setup day for the Lincolnshire show. Was the farm desperate for rain? That, actually, Melvin, was, was absolutely tremendously welcome. We had eight millimetres on Sunday night, which was the first rain we'd had, I think, since May the 5th, so probably six weeks nearly of dry weather. So 14 millimetres on Tuesday. On Yes, yeah, setting up here might not have been good, but it actually so softened the showground and, uh, and it made it better for walking it's around. It's good drainage here exactly, anyway, isn't it? Exactly, it is. And, and yeah, we've got service roads here, but to walk on grass that's rock hard, it's not very nice, is it? No. And what about your cereals this year? Yeah, we've got some good good uh, crops in the ground at the minute, and this rain we had the other... You mentioned there about the different crops, and we talked, uh, was it last week on the BBC Radio Lincolnshire, about uh, baked beans? Bean production. Now, is it really going to happen? It's not only going to happen, Melvin, it is happening and it's happening on Lednam, at my farm at Lednam, so that's fantastic. And we've been struggling over the years to try and get baked beans grown in this country. And I don't know whether you realise that the amount of beans that are consumed in the UK. We all love beans. Everybody. And you think you go to a cafe, you have breakfast, you have a little tub of baked beans, yeah. don't you? You have baked beans for lunch, you have baked beans on toast for supper. <laughs> School children come home and what do they want for supper? Baked beans on toast, mum. And in the UK, every single person uses an average. They use two million tins a day of baked beans. Wow. Staggering. So, so you're growing, but you're going to have to grow a heck of a lot in this country to make a difference, aren't we? We are, and that's the problem we've got. And we're looking at imports and things like that. And the amount of food that's produced in this country and the amount of food availability is dropping. We need to reverse that. We need to halt that decline. And at the moment, the baked beans come from China, America, and Canada mainly. I think a little bit from uh, from uh, Ethiopia. But those countries produce all the beans. But we need to stop that. We need to actually. Be able to produce homegrown beans, homegrown protein produced in Lincolnshire or in the UK to save on these imports because we want imports to actually drop, not not go up. That's the biggest thing. Lovely to see you. I've just met Toby here, who's a supporter of Wardy's Waffle. Is that right, Toby? Yeah. yeah. And I just said to him, what does he like more or less of? He says he likes everything, so we're going to keep going. So I've got the family here. Is that Mum? It is. Yes. And you're at the rally. Yeah, you came yeah, to the Young, Young Farmers Farm. Rally, came to the Young Farmers Rally at the farm which some of you saw a month ago, so thank you very much for saying hello. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Another highlight of the Young Farmers Year is the decorated trailers. This is late on Thursday evening, one of the last things happening in the ring because there'll be a lot of water about soon. This is all the Young Farmers stuff from Lincolnshire with their decorated floats. Still a lot of people here to see what's going on. Still coming in the main ring at the back. So they're just making the final line up. And then the carnage will start. Two more there. They've all got off. When I was in Young Farmers a few years ago, we did this. But we didn't have the tractors and trailers stationary. We drove all over the ring, flying around, trying to get the club we didn't like the most. And we weren't just, weren't just throwing water and flour, we were actually throwing paint as well. And uh, we didn't have an accident, I hit a tractor in another, but it's a wonder, but it was flying around the ring. And here we go, look, they're all off there. We stayed on the trailers, did it all from the moving trailers. We'll try and get in the ring, I think, and get a bit closer. <laughs> Look at it. Come on, Come on now. Come on. <laughs> I'm, I'll get wet, but that's I'll, it. I'll put this probably rare, you know. <laughs> Look here now.
<laughs> I am being spotted yet, but it won't be long. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Kate. They're so gonna get you. you know Hello. <laughs> How close there we get. <laughs> oh dear, we've been got. <laughs> so I've been got. Not too bad, I don't think. I'm not too bad. It certainly will. It's Harry Mason's last week as chairman, <laughs> county chairman. <laughs> Kate has been absolutely nobbled. I think we've all got a bit of a great bunch. So pleased to have been associated with Young Farmers this year. They're brave. <laughs> so much fun. like that's finally it everybody appreciates that which we do fantastic brilliant going back out I think probably the fight will carry on outside you can see I've been got a few times trousers as well but we're all right we're going to wash great organization or oh, better not treading that <laughs> great organization and great people here fantastic to be part of them. brilliant look here just all going out the ring now but I think we better move because we've got the band coming in this is the final Thing for 2023 Lincolnshire show. I don't think we'll go and join those and get amongst them. Fantastic, that isn't it? That's it, it's nearly over. Lowering the flag. It is an honour and a pleasure to have them with us here at the Lincolnshire Show. Formed in 2009, they have performed across the globe. Under the musical direction of Mr. James Woods, led by John Major Samuel Towers, ladies and gentlemen, the Lincolnshire Fire and Rescue Concert Band draws to a close for 2023 Lincolnshire Show. A huge thank you to all involved. That's it until this time next year. Hope you've enjoyed all the coverage. Driving out the show and spotted this. This is the first rubber track crawler, I think. Track Marshall TM200. Not quite, no, not quite sure how old it is. Have a quick look in the cab. First crawler with a steering wheel as well controls made at Gainsborough but they didn't make many of these so I don't think they were very successful just have a quick look round the back there we go 
one of only 17 made based on Australian design and building games book. Tom's pressing the area of the land on the other farm that we've uh, done this soloing on the stewardship areas but it's just blocking up a little bit there's so much debris here from the old crop so it hasn't mixed it that well there's a lot of stuff here a bit of moisture here now after the rain just see it's a bit darker thanks <laughs> um yeah a bit of moisture here but the uh, you can just see it's blocking up a bit here it wants doing again a bit a bit of an angle really That's why Tom's swinging out and doing circles, lifting up to try and just unblock it, just to spread the residue around a bit. It's doing a good job here, but you can just see it's trying to block up nearly all the time. The seed that's going to be put in here is quite fine and this isn't level enough to put fine seeds in because you'd have to have the drill quite deep to get the seed covered and then it means there's going to be uh, to get the seed covered in the shallow areas like here where it's a bit of a hollow and then uh, it'd be too deep in the other areas so I think we just need to do a bit more at this. I've just come down to the black grass pullers they're just behind me apologize for the wind I've left my microphone behind I'll just show you this black grass here because there's a fair bit of black grass here to pull but they are doing a cracking job. So this is the heap of black grass they've pulled out this field and well one of the heaps you can see we've sprayed an area off there. Frankie, Nala, come on, good girls, come on. You can see as Nala come past it. Nala there, just stand out here so you can see how big this heap is. Nala, come here. Nala, good girl. There, stay, stay, stay. Wait. You can wait there. Good girl. You can see there how big that is now, that heap of black grass. Now look it back, good girl. So they've pulled all that. Um, and come on then, Frankie. We'll go and have a, and uh, say hello to them. See how they're getting on, they're packing in for the day because they're starting at six in the morning at the minute because of the temperatures. And uh, it's now about three o'clock Friday afternoon, so they're just gonna finish. This is, the, remember me saying last week, this is the block of land, that, or one of the blocks of land we drilled on the 11th or 12th of November where the headlands are really, really poor. I need to do a lot of remedial work underneath here to get these right. I think I said um, last week that this field here and this one here and the one on the other side of the road behind the discovery there we're going to bring back into spring barley because they've just been gradually getting worse for the last few years, the last two or three years. And um, bad black grass, continuous spring barley is the answer. We've uh, managed to successfully get rid of it or reduce it, should I say, but it's just starting to come back. You can see some areas there were sprayed off. You can see the big heap they've got here. Hello, you have got a big job on. Look at this. How many fields is this from? Uh, it's from this field, and it's only one way up and one way no. down. No, crikey. Yeah, that's... Uh, one way up was three and a half hours. Just once down the field there. Yep. And that will be well, well, 350 meters probably. But crikey, just shows you. Uh... So we're just gonna go and look at these sheets in here, the worksheets. So this is the file. And Chris has been filling them in with the names of everybody, which is great time start time finish and then these are the maps so these are the fields so we need to know the date they're in how many hours on each field and i can put that in so we know an exact cost so every field has got the number of hours that's total hours for everybody not each person another block of land that we haven't started yet there's glebe farm 
So if we look at this field, we'll just go in this field here that some of you came to our I farm open day. We had the trials, 25 hours in there. I'll just go on gatekeeper and get back to the office and just show you the cost of that with herbicides. But 25 hours pulling at the minute, which is, is good in that field. Local farmer and contractors just arranged to buy a few planings from me. So he's just come with his own digger to load up. They're gonna be moving it with a tractor and trailer. So he's just unloading this now. Because they've gone solid, the, the trouble with the forklift here on here is they've gone really solid, the heap have. If you look at that. And uh, it needs the digger to loosen it and load it. We're just gonna have to come with the forklift then just to scrape the bottom of the heap up because with the teeth on the bucket there, there will be quite a lot, some on the concrete. I don't want the concrete damaging. Another local uh, low loader made by Bailey's. So this is the first video with the new phone. I've just got it all um, set up and I've got a microphone plugged in as well. So hope the um, camera's all right and the sound's all right. Um, one or two comments about the last uh, at, at Lincolnshire show rather that I should have had a microphone because uh, there's a lot of background noise with people talking. You couldn't hear when I was interviewing the uh, police and one or two other people. So I'll try and keep this microphone with me as much as I can. So this is the field of oats that we planted after late lifted sugar beet up on the light land. I'll just turn the camera around to walk into this crop and get off this uh, headland area because we're right near the sugar beet heap. You can see just here all the concrete rather where we had the sugar beet, which the trailers obviously rutted it here and the crop is not quite so good, which you'll see. So there's the concrete and just looking here, you can see it's a lot thinner just on this edge here because it was really wet and the trailers rutted it. But then the further we get into um, into the field, the uh, the better it is. Got there we go. Now I don't know whether I can pick up that skylark. There we go. Yeah, just there. Look at that. Full of song in the, at the minute. You can see why Lincolnshire is known as uh, as a county with lots of sky because it's just full of it. Look at that. Anyway, here, wild oat there, not a normal oat. And you might say, how do we know it's a wild oat? I'll pick one out here, it's a bit better because when you look at it, the seed there, different color. I'll just bend that over, different color, different size to the standard oats. So these oats here, they go for animal food, mainly pet food, a little bit for human consumption, but not too much. But when you look down here and get off this area away from the beet pad, much better there, much thicker much better so yeah pleased with these these were planted around about early to mid-march just heading across to the sugar beet field that we've got sugar beet in this year but i'll just get nala and frankie out the back they've only been here in a minute or two because it's quite hot today saturday afternoon there we go come on you two let's lift you out frankie there we go one-handed come on nala good girl there's a good girl come across here we'll look into the sugar beet field this particular one this field's about 55 acres it won't be harvested uh, until January February time it has been sprayed in the last week so the last three or four days actually you'll see early on in this video to be honest um, it's been sprayed with Topeki for virus yellows for the aphids that carry the virus that damages the crop and also it's been sprayed um, with Centurion Max which is clethodim for grass weeds looking looking quite good one or two little gaps there and there but nearly met in the row when you look down there the rain we had Tuesday night we had a tw um, 14 millimetres last Tuesday night. We had eight millimetres Sunday night. It's done the world of good to these crops. They've absolutely soaked it up. And now these leaves, they're just basking in this sunshine, soaking up the light, which that ultimately puts sugar on, which is what we get paid on. Looks really good. As I say, one or two little gaps. We planted the sugar beet 
straight into the land that was soloed and pressed and I'm just considering we ought to be just cultivating it very shallow with a spring tine or something because I've spoke to somebody at the seals event and they said they used to do this what we we're doing but they're getting better germination by just putting a harrow across it little spring tine well I say a wide spring tine but it doesn't cost very much and it improves the germination a lot so yeah pleased with this sugar beet growing really well now just seen Nala's got a weed beet in the mouth there we go I've just pulled that and uh, this is one thing that we need to get rid of we have one or two weed beet around you can see there's one there and we will pull these when they get a bit bigger but I'll just pull these now and we are getting a few of these grown because we have sugar beet one year uh, in four up on this land and that's where you get these weed beet you can see another one there let's just pull that there we go just see the roots so I'll pull that and then it won't seed again because that's what we don't want and there's quite a few here I can just see this is going to be quite a bad patch or a bad field pull that there we go yeah pull that up drop it and then it just wilt away another one here so we'll get the black grass pullers in here but it won't be for another month at least get that pulled so there's any like that thank you Nala Maybe we don't need them if Nala's going to keep doing that. There's a little bed here of weed beet. You can see there, if I try and get the camera down low, so that you can see them. Quite a few just here sticking up. There's going to be a lot just here in places, but they do need pulling. But if we get them early enough, we don't need to take them off the field, we just pull and drop them. But here on the headland, they are difficult to pull unless it's just rain, because this headland is a lot more solid than the middle of the field. So that's it for another Sunday's waffle. Hope you've enjoyed it and you found the sound uh, better. I used the microphone the last few times uh, and also the picture's okay on this new um, iPhone 14. Certainly a lot better than what it would have been if I'd used the one that got run over because there is part of the screen and that is uh, another part of it and the other side of it is like that. So yeah, not very good. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I might see you uh, midweek twice actually because I've got quite a lot of stuff to post. So I think we're gonna do two midweek ones. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.